Hey, Marlon. Uh-huh. I want my shield back. Can I sell this freaking longsword, this masterwork longsword, for a shield? Wanna go to the store? Yeah. How much is the how much is the masterwork uh, masterwork longsword worth? I don't know. You tell me, because it's not in the items. Are you sure? Because I'm pretty sure it is. I asked you what kind of a longsword it was. You said it was masterwork, but the longsword is uh, 15 gold. But you said it was a masterwork one. Masterwork adds 100 gold to it. Okay, so 150 gold. And you said a shield. It was just 10 gold, 10 times the gold last time. Wait, 115? Let's calculate. Because this guy has a very strict. We will pay you six gold for that sword. No, we're trading. I'm not paying for it. I want the shield. How much is the shield? 10 gold. Selling you the gold, the shield for the 100 gold. When you balk at the offer, he says, Go trade somewhere else then. And he snickers at you. Wait, so is he actually trading right now? Because, like, where are the rest of us? Yeah, he's trading right now. Okay. Hey, remember, I'm supposed to be a pretend merchant. So, you know, if you just say, All right, I'll go to that merchant. And uh, pretend to haggle with me. Well, I think we had a rapport because I was going to get him get him out of the freaking... Does that mean door. he's going to give you better prices? It's not better prices. The shield is 10 gold. Yeah. He says... That's exactly what he says to you, though. He says, try selling it somewhere else if you're not happy with the price. So he wants 100? Mm-hmm. 100 gold for the only quality shield in miles. And he grins at you. Okay. I'll trade in this jewelry box and a gold ring for the shield. What's the jewelry box? The jewelry box is worth 75 gold. The gold ring is worth 25. Wait, wait, wait. Let me uh, cast the spell to detect magic just to check if any of our gear is magical. He has a point. All right, let's see. Gold ring. Hey, gold ring. Where did our loot go? I don't see it anywhere on my character. Did you get any of the loot? Check your inventory. Yeah, check your inventory. So the gold so ring the gold is ring. not magical. Yeah, I no, got the it, eye patch. The detect magic allows me to see anything magical within uh, thirty feet or something. Let me look. Okay, well, tell me what you want to detect because uh, so I can go through them because I, I need to I need to actually find the item. Okay, for Do the silver short sword that I have and the copper doorknob. Yeah, I'll look at all of it. For the duration, you sense the presence of magic within 30 feet of you. If you sense magic in this way, you can use your action to see a faint aura around any visible creature or object in the area that bears magic. And you learn at school of magic, if any. Okay, well, I didn't memorize everything you guys have, so just point out the stuff that you think is magical so I can look at it. Well, there's the eye. Yeah. You said it had a picture of a chameleon on it? Who has that? Kronk? Kronk? I do, but I don't see it in my inventory. There are black leather eye patch. It is in there. It's just a regular eye patch, although it is worth a pretty penny. Not not like a, a lot of money, but it's worth more than just a regular eye patch. Oh, well then okay. I'll sell that. Don't sell it to this guy. He's freaking cheap as fuck. Um, no. Just hold on to it. I'm just trying to get a shield. Oh, are we resting? Because I'm still fucked. You guys are gonna rest after this. I'm just gonna say you guys stopped on the way to, on, on the sword on the way. Uh, do we have charcoal? Wait, hang on. Let me see the. Let me see the thing. Wait, you you should have it in your materials bag, man. No, yeah, no, it, should, uh, um, some, no, something caught. No, it's something that costs money. Okay. Oh, okay. How much is it? Um, I just need ten gold points worth of charcoal. I sell it to you for a hundred gold. No, oh, what the fuck's wrong with this guy? I want. Uh, can I cast uh my Trepid or peppers or whatever, the to turn my copper doorknob to a gold doorknob. It doesn't, it doesn't last, last that long. long. Yeah, but I could uh, try to sell it. It lasts for an hour. Okay. Uh, wait. Before we do anything crazy like that, I'm still looking at your magical sh magical shit. 
Okay, uh, let's do my real quick one on the gold ring. Normal. You said nothing. Yeah. Um, the sh silver short sword. Silver short sword. Uh, normal. But it is, okay. so it's worth a lot, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use that actually as a weapon. Are my lasers um, magical? Well, we're, not, we're, not, we're gonna do one character at a time, so I can just look through everything. Right. Um, the jewelry box. I'm assuming these are just regular jewelry box. Um, platinum necklace. Regular. That is worth a shit ton of money. But yeah, regular. Yeah, that's all I have. Alright, who's next? Who's next? Who's next? Wow. Okay, Kronk. Let's see. Let's see. So, what are you pointing at? Okay, you said the eye patch was worth a pretty penny. Yeah. But, yeah. I want to make an argument. Okay. You know, you know how I took the Legos out of the dead kid's room? Legos. Set in your inventory. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Remember when I busted down the window? And then the kids seemed happier, and they just kind of faded away. Mm hmm Is there somehow a way uh, those Legos can be some sort of magical thing? Your choice? Uh, they make they make it uneasy terrain. <laughs> you know what? I will. Okay. Um. Chris, you do sense some kind of a <laughs> magical thing on it. Can't tell. Uh, can't tell what. Can I tell the school of magic? Do an arcane check. How do I roll that? Do I just click and drag? Click and drag the... onto the chat box. Arcana. Arcana. Okay. Where do I see my gold? All right, you uh, identify it, the Legos, and you know now that the Legos, as long they are divine rather more than Arcana. And you know that the Legos, as long as you keep those Legos on your person. Check something real quick. Okay, yeah. So as long as you keep that Lego on somebody that's holding it, they get the lucky trait. Neat. Wait, so each of my Legos have no, the lucky no. trait? No, you're all the Legos. Yeah, so you can only only one person can hold them. The lucky okay. trait. Okay. That's what you have, Gino. Oh, okay. So whenever you roll a one, you get the chance to re-roll. No, oh. the, there's different kinds of luck feats. Yeah, luck, it gives you, you can choose three times, but lucky, that's, yeah, what, G, lucky. that's what Gino has. It's what Gino has, yeah. Oh, uh, okay, just checking. Sweet. Where, where do I see my gold? It should be, uh... It's inventory under treasure. If you didn't write it in, I don't think you have any. I didn't write any in either. Uh yeah, you guys need to wait. I did not. I didn't give you guys treasure. You didn't really tell us either. Well, so far you guys haven't really been getting coinage. So whatever you had in the beginning is the only coinage you should have at all right now. Yeah, I don't remember how much I had in the beginning because that was my other character. I didn't pay for anything. I had zero. Okay. Well, you guys have a lot of you have a lot of coinage in the t in the t uh, in the in tre in treasure. Like, yeah. if you look at my brother, he has tons of coinage right now. If you can find someone to sell it to, that is. Yeah, we're holding on to this to move into the next city. Alright, let's go. Who's next? Is Kronk right. done? Yeah, I think you're done, Kronk. Right? Yeah, you're done. Yeah, I'm done. I don't have anything else. Alright, who's next? Because we're going through... Let's go through this pretty quick. Uh, let's go with Gino. Gino, do you have anything you want me to look at? So, he's, he's going to rip off her... He's going to rip off her charcoal? Oh yeah, she's gonna. Well, we're not buying. I'm just detecting magical items. Let me look through your oh. list right now. I have the ivory hairbrush. Not magical. The black cloak. Not magical. Scroll protection for poison and scroll spiritual weapon. Obviously. Those are ma obviously magical. <laughs> this is obviously magical. All right, I'm not really sure okay. about these guys. I mean, it's got some weird words uh, on it. You guys, you're good. Uh, who hasn't done Sasha? Sasha. Play, 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 play,
Blank book is just a high quality book. Normal. Um, what is this chest? You have like a literal chest? Like an actual chest? No, a human yeah. torso. The fuck? Okay, this <laughs> copper doorknob is not magical. Uh, well, it is magical in the sense that it's from a, a magical creature. There you go. I'll say that. Say that you got magical hide. Uh, manacles are not magical. Porcelain doll head that always seems to be looking at you. That does have magic on it. Uh, that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it. Do an arcana check on that thing. See what the fuck it is. The doll. Nuts. You can't tell. You cannot tell. Does anyone oh, else can do an arcana time? check too? Yeah, there's you... another caster here. Do it. Yeah, I'll do it too. Unskilled. 16. The fuck? <laughs> <laughs> You cannot tell. What are we reading again? Cannot tell. Who's left? The doll. Anyone else want to try? The doll. Yeah. Nope, you cannot tell either, Sasha. I think that's everyone. You know, it's just you, you know. now. I don't have Arcana. Can I still roll? You can still roll. Yeah, roll. It's just unskilled. Yeah. Nah, no, you can't 13. tell. 13. <laughs> <laughs> no one can tell what it is, but it is magic. It it it, it there's an outline around it. Chris. Can I do a real? Can I do a religion check? I don't know if that'll do no, it. no, no more checks. Okay. For a while, at least. What's the <laughs> item again? It's the doll. The doll. Oh, okay, yeah, just keep it. It's Wait, fucking. Do I have uh, vibes from it? Yes. It's fucking the Chucky doll. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, getting negative vibes. Uh, I don't know if having it around one of us is a good idea. Alright, Sasha likes that kind of shit. Wait. It goes to my daughter. <laughs> okay. Alright, do I get my shield, Marlon? 100 gold for a shield? Yeah. He will sell you up. Uh, do you want to buy it straight up? Just like that? Do you want to do anything interesting? Uh... Yeah, I'm just gonna buy it. All right, hundred gold. Does he have a? So I'm gonna give up my jewelry box for seventy-five, and my gold ring for twenty-five. Does this guy sell the spare water skin? And how much would that be? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, Kronk's gonna go up to the merchant and growl really loudly and say, "Me think these prices are ridiculous." Go ahead, roll intimidation. He scowls back. Find another merchant then. Maybe this town find another merchant after I'm done with him. Ooh, another intimidation. Oh. <laughs> he says, is that a threat? No threat, but maybe you no sleep so well at night. Bad reviews. He just smiles at you and he says, I always sleep well at night. Kronk's gonna laugh and then uh, slip into the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't World of Warcraft. <laughs> Can I intimidate I him with my boobs? Hey, if I slip into the he shadows, already has not like you, Sasha. Sasha. It's like I don't think he was gonna. I don't even think you were even allowed in the shop. I think he yeah. kicked you out last time. Yeah, he did kick you out. You're actually not allowed in the shop. <laughs> okay. I go in the shop and be like, <laughs> if you don't sell me fair prices, I'm going to put these against you. <laughs> Here, let me roll this. I'm gonna roll this for you. <laughs> What is this? How come you have a deception and persuasion? What is this? I have no idea how that happened. Are you? What Never mind. It? What is this? Okay, let me see.
He he screams at you, get out, lizard thing. <laughs> Walk out meekly. <laughs> <laughs> so I try on I try on the shield and I strap it on. It's like, um. I guess I say thanks for your business and grumble and I walk out. But I'll remember this and I'll be back for my freaking patch. As you walk out, he says, I'm sure you will. His total wait, voice suggests wait. that he thinks you're going to die somewhere. <clears throat> it's, um. It's, uh... oh, never mind. Go ahead, Chris. Um. Wait, did Marion already buy the shield? Yeah, he already bought it. Yeah. Uh... Okay. It's too slow. You should have said something sooner. In um, the future, I have a spell called Suggestion, which makes them more malleable to suggestions. So, just heads up. Is that the one that makes them angry after you cast it? No, let me, let me read it. I think it's a little late for that. I mean, we all kind of... Yeah, I'm just letting yeah, you know for the future. Is that, is that most effective the first time you meet them? Because yeah. they kind of already have opinion of you guys. Uh, I can concentrate up Not to eight Christmas. hours. Your suggestion of course of activity limited to a sentence or two and magically influence a creature you can see within range that can hear or understand you. Uh, creatures that can't be charmed or immune to this effect, the suggestion must be worded in such a manner to make course of action sound reasonable. Asking the creature to stab itself, throw itself a spear, emulate itself, or do something obviously harmful ends the spell. That would have been really useful. But yeah, you can't use it right now. Alright, is everyone done with this merchant? No one uh, wants to sell any of their ill-gotten gains. Well, not much, ill-gotten, but... Not from this fool. How much is I'm a, keeping it. How much is a water skin from this guy? Uh, You're going to have to look it up. There, let me see. Water skin who, has a, is, who has a water skin right now? It's 2 SP. Everyone. You sell it to you for 2 gold. Uh, do I have 2 gold? We could just go through the houses and find some. No, do I have 2 gold? What's my starting gold? Do you? I haven't spent... It doesn't look like you have any gold. Because I didn't spend anything when I started. I didn't know if we got starting gold or anything like that. Uh, uh Marlon, by the way. Let's just say you don't have any gold. Okay. Can you check... Can you check my inventory to see if anything's magical? Because we never got around to mine. Oh, yeah, You're supposed cool. to tell him what to check. Yeah, so I can look at it. Uh, I, I, I could comb through yours really quick. Da, 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 da. I got a windmill seal stamp, uh, signed will, uh, playing cards. Uh, that might not be. The moss agate. No, they're not magical. The moss I get's worth a little bit of money. Can I trade this black cloak and a torch for the water skin? What about the two darts from the chest trap? No, he wants coinage. Coinage, okay. Two darts from the chest trap. Uh, look, there are two darts. Uh, they're tipped with something. It's not magical, but when you inspect them, they are tipped with something, uh, poisonous. Can I look at the merchant? Okay. Do I see anything magical on him? He is wearing a magical ring and an earring. Can't tell what they don't do, though. So, Yanni, you want to rob him? Oh my god. Um, we can wait till he goes to bed. You know what? That sounds like a good idea. You yeah. guys do know that you're supposed we, to be leaving the We're supposed to be escorting the freaking woman out of this town. We got sidetracked from freaking coming back from the graveyard to to the home by these kids that we tried to help. The woman's still waiting and we slept in the house like, what, twice? That's two days later. <laughs> Let's just, yeah, maybe we should just go then. Well, we still have to rest tonight, because I'm like at 1 HP. Yeah, we're still gonna rest, but I'm, gonna I'm be saying. If you're robbing someone. Yeah. Okay, you guys can rob someone. I'm gonna rest. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna head back home too. Alright. I start following Frost. Be like, you guys do what you wanna do. Before I rest, I'm going to uh, create four healing potions. 
Hey, do we know where this uh, guy lives, the merchant? In his shop. All right. Um, I'll rest, but sometime that night, can I see if I can see through his windows and maybe Mage Hand steal something from him? You're going to go out by yourself? Do you know where we are, Chris? Gonna... I'm just, I'm just, we're, we're in a freaking town yeah, that's me, full of ghosts and just, zombies. Reiterate the, the city you're in. Maybe three fourths of the houses are filled with zombies in this town. So as you walk by through the doors, you see dead people that are walking around inside each of the houses, and then no, there's no one in the streets. The fog, there's a fog that surrounds the town, and at night, ghosts come out. I thought the fog uh, left with the house. No, there's still fog. It's just not no. in the city right now. It's like surrounding the city. All right. Yeah, well, we just... don't we don't know why these monsters are staying in the house, but for whatever reason, they're not coming out, or something's keeping them within the house. And I don't recommend going out at night by yourself because you'll probably be attacked and killed. Fine. Uh, when we're walking through town to go rest wherever wherever it is. Just... Do perception checks for me so I can see if there's anything easily mage handable to take out of a window. I mean, as you're walking through town, I don't even have to do a perception check. As you're walking through town, most of the buildings are intact. But when you peer through the windows, there's always usually a dead person staring at you. Or maybe you don't see anyone and it looks abandoned. Alright, so nothing valuable? Not really. This is a really shabby town. Alright, well, if I see anything of consequence, just let me know. Okay. So you guys make it... Even guys... if it's a water skin. Okay. Well, you guys make it back to the Burgomaster, uh, Burgomaster's mansion. And you open the door, and you come staggering in. And so who's fucked up, Kronk? It's Kronk, Kronk is fucked up. I'm fucked up. Sasha is. Sasha oh, is fucked up. up. I'm old. Uh, <laughs> I took no damage. You're old as fuck. As you walk fine. in, all right, where's my notes? Okay, as you walk in, you see Ismark the Lesser and Irina look at you, and they gasp. They go, "Oh, what happened to Kronk? What happened to Terran?" And they look at Terran in total shock. Yeah, yeah, because Gina, you're older, remember? What's wrong with Terran? Oh. He's yeah. old as fuck now. When did he get older? You weren't paying attention last time. After the freaking fight, yeah. Every time I when I, I picked up all the stuff to save our asses, and it, I I aged like twenty it years. It aged him like t like twenty years, yeah. Oh, I don't remember that. I think it's because you were drunk that day. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh yeah, you were drunk that day. Uh, maybe. All right. So that's what they say. They say, what happened to you guys? And they bring you in. And then they say, we got to get Kronk to, uh, to a bed. So they kind of lay Kronk down on uh, one of the beds on the downstairs floor. So, yeah, as, as they're doing that, I go, I Irina, there were two children that we sent here. Did you see them? Did they arrive? Children? What are you talking about, she says. Like... Just before we arrived, we came across two children who, who were crying about um, something going on with their parents, and we went to go investigate. Um, all, uh, while we investigated, we sent them here. Do, do we know what the children's names are out of character? Wait, no. Not, I don't Aren't think so. Are the same so. children that was locked up in the bedroom upstairs? Yes. Yeah, but we saw them outside first. So that could be them, but we sent someone here. So Ismark so, and Irina look at each other, and Ismark says, "He says no, since the no one's come here since the last hour we separated from the church. It's only been an hour." And Ismark says, "Yeah, where have you guys been for the last hour?" So, what about so I I kind of. I kind of um, point them to the house or the direction that we came from. There was a house, and I kind of described the house that we came from. Um, and 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 do you know that that place? The one that's missing. Yeah, the they, one that's not missing. They say there's. I mean, there was a house there a long time ago, 
when I was probably in, when I was like around eight or nine. So that must have been twenty years ago, Ismark says. I hold up my hand and show him my ring finger. Can you explain this? They both look at it and they say, No, I'm not sure what that is. I'm gonna make a perception check. Crunk, okay. crunk, crunk determines it is a ring. <laughs> no. On the not on the ring, on the um the innkeepers. But maybe for some reason we went back in time and those were the children we sent. What do you mean? Oh, what do you mean innkeepers? Dogs. This is this is These aren't the innkeepers. Yeah, these, these are, are the these are these are by okay. Oh wait, um, was he not here when we when we met them first? No, he was here. Do, okay, recap, recap. So you met uh you met two people in this town. Ismark the Lesser, which is the son of the Burgomaster who is no, like, show the pictures. Okay. There's a this is actual story, people. So we were in a time traveling house. So mm. is Mark the Lesser that you guys met at the bar here? He's the son of the mayor of this town, and Arena 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 Kolyan. She's Russian. Yes. She's fantasy who, Russian. Who who's the uh, the daughter of the? Burgomaster. So just as recap, just in case anyone forgot, uh, Count Strahd, who seems to be the ruler of this land, has been frequently visiting Irina, trying to uh, basically take her away. Uh, so what happened is the Burgomaster, who was the father, and Ismark the Lesser have been trying to keep him away from her by locking her up in this house. But they fear that uh, the day is coming soon when Strahd's just gonna burst through the front door and take her away. But she has a sword. She has a sword, and as and if you guys don't remember, she's an extremely fiery and uh, enthusiastic uh, woman. She's not a fighter, even but though she, she looks know, like it. But she doesn't know how to fight. But she's very eager to fight. Let's say that. Well, she, has, she has, she's not good at fighting. I'm just saying, do they look anything like the children we saw? No. Okay. Now, the children that we saw were, like, kind of bluish. Yeah. Smurfs. They were Smurfs, actually. <laughs> New Smurf race. But anyways, just to, just to recap, we got hired to escort her to whatever other town on the other side of the thing. So before we went and embarked on that side quest, um, from that shopkeep, I secured us a freaking a don two donkeys and a wagon to yeah. take us across that uh, across um, to to that location. Across the land here, there's a. Uh, here. Hey, What's can that? I name one of the donkeys Kong? Yes, no. you can. Actually, it's my brother's donkey. You can. They're my donkeys. Name. So this is the map of the land. Uh, you guys are trying to get to. Balaki. Yeah, Velaki, the village of Velaki, town of Velaki, which is to the west. So you guys, you guys, you guys see the village of Barovia. You have to go west past the Zer Pool, past the Zer Falls, past Cap Castle Ravenloft, up the old uh, old Volich Road, and then there's Velaki next to Lake Zarovich. So Sounds that's like we're in Russia. Yeah. We're in Barovia. You're it says Barovia. on the map. Okay. Get with it, Chris. Wow, that's a long way. Well, let's get started. That's why we got donkeys. Yeah, first you gotta get your life back, so rest. Well, they're asking what happened to Taryn. Yes. Taryn, why don't you tell your story before we got sidetracked with trying to recap and everything? They met the merchant's mom. <laughs> oh, God. Because you are visibly older. These yeah, so after after finding so Frous after finding out and not understanding that that um, only an hour has passed, he's kind of like uh, struck with his knowledge and he's kind of like in shock. He saw Crunk smile, and hair went white. <laughs> I just ignore okay. him and I say the um, these heathens tried to stop us on our righteous journey. But, okay. But don't worry, if this is all that they can throw at us, then I think we could survive. 
All right. Uh, uh, so uh, while you're in shock, uh, Frost, they uh, they have you sit down. As Mark says, Arena, get uh, get this man a drink. It seems like something's bothering him a lot. And then after they get uh, Frost a drink, they get you some ale, Frost. And then they listen to Terran's tale about heathens. Charlatans, actually. Charlatans, Charlatans. actually. Yeah. Charlatans. Charlatans. And basically, I recap what we encountered in the, in the house. All right. So while uh, actually, you know what? Let me see. Where is uh, Terran? How good is your charisma? Maybe a performance check. Oh my god. All right. So <laughs> you didn't roll it a second time. I think that was a twenty. Okay. So, you guys all start listening to uh, Taryn's tale, but he just keeps jumping from, like, episode to episode, and then, like, he starts in the middle, and then he goes to the beginning, and Never then he mind. jumps to the end, in between. Everyone's fucking confused by the end of the night, and it takes him, like, two hours, so Kronk falls asleep. And by the time he's done with his story, you have no idea what the fuck he was talking about, and you're not even sure he was on the same adventure as you guys. Wait a minute. So then I I, uh, I tap uh, what's that guy's name? Ismark. I tap Ismark. You have to you have to forgive him. He did age twenty years in one hour. He's probably going senile. Yeah, I, Ismark whispers back. He's like, I can tell. And then he <laughs> tells everyone in the group. Perhaps we should get some rest. It seems like some of us need it more than others. And he pointedly glances at Kronk and Terran. And he says, uh, we, we should set out early tomorrow. Or rather, you guys should set out early tomorrow. Okay. Before we go to sleep, can I cast Alter Self to try and grow my nails and hair back? Sure, but how long does that last? Never mind, then. <laughs> I'm going to create four healing potions. Alright. So, uh, you create four healing potions. Your daughter is watching you. Intently as you do it, you see a. Spark. What does it? What does it look like? <laughs> yeah, what does it look like? Tell me. Are you like uh, dancing around, and as these potions are mixing, or are you like sitting down? <laughs> is is he squeezing his boobs? Squeezing it out. <laughs> I don't. I don't want that actually. <laughs> yeah. Out of my boobs. I'd rather bleed out. Okay. Actually. <laughs> so he's literally milking, um, his potions <laughs> out of his boobs. His dragon <laughs> Plus five to health. Yeah, there you go. And you guys are watching, and and then uh, basically you're watching, and you're like, these are your healing potions. Delicious. <laughs> Who's getting them? Only four? <laughs> Only four. Only well, four. Kronk doesn't see this, so I'm thinking he'll take some. I'll, I'll use I'll use Mage Hand to hold it up in the air, and I just go. Thanks. You guys can go ahead and distribute those potions now, uh, so we don't have to do it later. Even if Kronk's unconscious, you can take some Kronk. Who's uh, getting who it, Sasha? How many are there for? I yeah. guess uh, everyone but Frouse. That's fine. Need one. Don't need one. I person. have a, I have a second wind. Frouse my brother has like throw. his my, yeah he has his own healing, Chris. If you still don't want it, I guess I'll take one. So should I just add potion, healing potion? Yeah, healing potion. potion How long does it healing. last? Uh, Twenty four hours. Okay, yeah, you guys will be good for a while. That's a pretty good if spell, you, actually. You keep, Potion of healing? You keep casting it every yeah. How do I add that to my inventory? Just go to items and type in Potion of Healing, and then yeah. drag it in. As long as I have a spell slot, I could cast it. Okay. And I have uh, four level one spell slots. <clears throat> okay, so you guys call it a night. <laughs> it plays the little sleeping jingle. Dee 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 dee. Alright, <laughs> throughout the night, um, everyone has a a super deep sleep no dreams except for chris chris you still dream of swimming in blood and drowning as it like enters every orifice of your body even your butthole really <laughs> exactly. especially your butthole especially your butthole <laughs> and you're just coughing up and you can't get air and you just get blood and then you wake up in cold sweat and it's morning da da all right so you guys have a comfortable sleep. Uh, go ahead and heal, max heal. Everyone, max heal. Get your HD back, and then uh, your spells are reset. How do we know how much HD do we have? It should reset. It, it says on the main, doesn't it? it? Says wound max temp. 
No, no, no your, your, your hit dice. Oh, hit isn't it just just your level? So I get four. I get or three. Is it your level plus your cons yeah, constitution. Let me, um, let me uh, give you guys all. Uh, let me do it for you. All right, there we go. I got four now. Long rest. Who's next? Terran. Then Frost. Long rest. Uh, who hasn't done it? Chris. Yeah, I don't Long know. Rest. Kronk. Hey Marlon, did you know there's an option in right. in fantasy rounds you can make the Oops, um, sorry. you can make <laughs> dead <laughs> you Go can ahead. make um, healing a little bit more difficult. I'll have to look in, that up later, but let's just, just play right now. But I'll look it up because that's is this an option? Yeah. Okay. All right, so it's morning. You guys are packing up. You, guys, you have uh, two pack mules, right? Yeah. Two pack meals in a cart. Can I ask uh, Ismark if they have any charcoal on them in their house? Did we get to eat our rations or the rations were our food was provided? Food was provided. Uh, they right. have a fireplace you can check there. That's not what charcoal is. Um, okay, I'm going to say they do have charcoal. Go can ahead I, and add. How yeah, much charcoal do you want? I need 10 gold. I, I, I'll, take tw I'll take 20. You get 10. 10. I'll just give you 10 golds worth. I also want charcoal. Okay, go ahead and take 10 golds worth. But that, I'm going to create a familiar. Ditto. What's what's the charcoal for? Uh, our rituals. We need to create a pet, a familiar. Oh, then I'll take some charcoal no, too. No, no, it's just for, oh, well, I guess, whatever, if you have the spell too. Do you have the spell? Do you have the spell? Yep. Okay, yeah. Alright, so go ahead, everyone. Um, you, I'm going to say you guys do it on the road. Oh, hey, Marlon. What's up? Can we take all the food from the house? No, he need, his mark needs it to survive. <laughs> his mark is staying. Where it's just us and the girl. We're just robbing oh, okay. him of food. Well, He's let's like, make sure uh, to fill guys, up our wine skins from the from the well. Yes. Yeah. Do you know you do have that wine skin full filled with dirty blood? Do they have any yeah. like? Actually, it's really clean blood. <laughs> oh yeah, really clean blood. It's probably turning into a jelly by now. Do they have anything in the house that I could use as a water skin? No. Okay then. Then can I just drink from the well itself? Sure. Because uh, apparently I just need to drink two liters worth. Uh, twice like one, at least. I mean, I'm more. assuming everyone drank two liters before they left. But okay. I'm I'm talking about the water skins on the road. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Oh yeah. Make sure I cast two uh, water tentacles from the well. So you're just holding them above your head the entire time. Pretty much. Well, they're just water tentacles. I mean. Okay, They're sure. All wobbly and stuff, floating in the air. You know, Christopher. Yeah. I'm actually really curious what would happen if you took a sip of that blood. I'd rather not find out right now. Okay. You'd be our first uh, player kill. Okay, so uh, I uh, you guys understand the steps of making your familiar, right? Or calling yeah. your familiar. All right, so go, you guys can go ahead and design or whatever your familiar and continue as you guys travel on the road. So, so wait, who's 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 driving this thing? Because it was freaking Bata last time. Who has animal handling? Yeah, actually, who does have animal handling? Uh, Bata's staying with uh, Ismark because he's in like a catatonic Lim state. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just have Vata do it? No. He's no longer with us. Oh, he's not? He could be our chauffeur. No, I'm not going to give you guys a chauffeur. Someone has to drive it. Let the, let the child drive it. <laughs> the child is fascinated by your guys' magic, actually. Jeff, too. What about, uh, what about um, the girl? What's her name? Irina? Irina. Irene or whatever. Okay, yeah, she can drive it. If you want the girl to drive it. She's obviously a pampered princess. God damn it. Okay. I have animal handling of one. Anything anyone have a beater that's higher than mine? No, just one. Negative one. Negative one. Okay, Frost is driving it. God damn it. I'm driving it. Negative one. Maybe for me we too. can do a combined effort. You and I <laughs> yeah, yeah, me, me and Kronk. <laughs> me and Kronk. Kronk is helping me. Okay, He's holding guys. one end of the rain and I'm holding the other. And then okay. we're holding hands. I'm, uh... <laughs> my, and uh... this car is, like, tilted because Kronk's so huge and then you're small and you're sitting on the other side. Hey, what no, are your... Kronk is sitting on my lap. Alright, alright. 
Kronk think that's not a good idea. <laughs> All right, so you guys start traveling. You guys go west, traveling west. Ismark waves you guys goodbye as you guys continue out of the city. <clears throat> this is where someone plays uh, banjo music. Who's got banjo music? <laughs> I said, uh, can I sit? Can I? <laughs> Wait, what are you guys' familiars? I don't know. Sasha's is an invisible imp. But you, you said you're gonna cast it, find familiar, and get one as well. So what, what do you want? All right. Okay, fine. Yeah, I get a hawk, but you're not gonna talk to me. I'll travel, you guys. Who are you talking to? I'm asking everyone who's got find familiar. I don't have a familiar. I know. It's I'm just not talking you to you and Sasha. Oh, and, and okay. Chris. Yeah. yeah. You guys can decide on the familiar uh, while we're continuing. So just think about it. Um. Okay, as you guys are traveling, you guys end up crossing the bridge, and this takes about, this will take about, so about three hours, you cross the bridge, and you move, and you continue to move, and to the left and right of you, you see like a large forest as you pass by, and you guys come up to a crossroads, and then you look at the crossroads, and you see an old wooded gallow creaks in a chill wind that blows down from the high ground to the west a frayed length of rope dances from its beam a well-worn road splits here and a signpost opposite the gallows points off in three directions barovia village to the east uh zur pool to the northwest and ravenloft slash Valaki to the southwest uh the northwest uh fork slants down and disappears into the woods uh while the southwest fork clings clings to the upward slope Across the gallows, a low wall cr uh, crumbles in place, partially enclosing a small plot of graves shrouded in fog. Uh, what you also do notice is that to the southwest, there seems to be a um, mudslide. Okay. I don't think that, I don't think there's anything worth stopping to investigate. Um, where do you guys want to go? Do you guys want to go ahead towards the town? Um, it looks like it's a well, town. Towards the town is a, uh, mudslide. Oh, that's where the mudslide is? Yeah. The only other direct signs left is Barovia, where you guys came from, and then Zerpool. So can I pick... Oh, I guess, uh... Wait, can I say... Can I pick my familiar now? Yes, Gino, you can pick your familiar. What is it? It's an owl, and I would like to send the owl out to investigate. Investigate what? Uh, which one's the mud... Or... Which one's the mudslide? Probably past the mudslide is what he's trying to say. Yeah, I want to okay. go past the mudslide. So, I uh, I want to use my ability to see through its eyes. Okay, so you send the owl out and you look, and you see the mudslide's pretty lengthy. I'm gonna say it's about a mile long. That sounds like a shit show. Maybe we should take a different route. Okay. So... Yeah, we're gonna get stuck if we if we uh, yeah, our cart might get stuck in the mud. We have we probably gonna have to go around. You guys see the map of Barovia, right? I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you guys, you guys pull up your map, you look, and you say, all right, so here's where we can go. So the crossroads, if you see, if you follow the road west out of Barovia, it goes across the bridge, and the crossroads is where uh, it pulls up next. You see there's a point going north and then one going south. The one going southwest, you guys, you guys, everyone knows what I'm talking about? Away from yeah. Zerpool. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, away from Zerpool, it goes southwest. That's the one that has the mudslide covering it. And then there's Zero Pool <clears throat> to the north northwest. Oh, so it wants us to go to Zero Pool. Okay. No. Let's just go northwest. It looks like there's a camp up ahead. It's like a town. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. The, the one one by Zero Pool. Let's do it. Maybe we can still know where's there. Alright, let's go. I'm going to keep the owl up ahead of us. Okay, you guys continue traveling. <clears throat> and you guys travel. It's starting to get nighttime. 
uh, the, the, la, the land starts to get low, but up ahead you hear joyful music, which is oddly surprising. You hear basically fiddles in the wind. And the road uh, gradually disappears and is replaced by a twisted, muddy path through the trees. Deep ruts in the earth are evidence of comings and goings of wagons. The canopy of mist and branches suddenly give way to black clouds boiling far above. There is a clearing here, next to a river that widens to form a small lake several hundred feet across. Five colorful round tents, each ten feet in diameter, are, pitted, pit, are pitched outside a ring of four barrel-top wagons. A much larger tent stands near the shore of the lake, its sagging form lit from within. Near this tent, eight unbridled horses drink from the river. And then uh, you hear uh, a whole bunch. Of, and then you see a whole bunch of people that are singing, and actually uh, playing accordions, and fiddles. And then, well, beyond this, and you see people there. So you, they're they're like uh, singing and stuff. And beyond them, you see you see footpaths that go past the encampment. Okay, so then I I look to I look to, to Sasha, and I go, I go this. This mood does not fit this environment beyond the lookout. But I, th- I think we should we should head head towards them as the night grows dark. We need to set up camp and continue in daylight. I agree. Wait, are we next to the the tent? You guys are you guys are overlooking it basically. So you guys are kind of a distance away, and you hear Irina say, "Oh, those are the Vistani." She said, uh, "Vistani are kind of like." Uh, the gypsies of the land. They were wandering bards, merchants, and traders. Although I've never seen one myself. I go, Mr. Mr. Syravina, the, the, the environment does not make sense for them to be this way. Have they always acted such? Well, she thinks about it. The Vistani in the tales have always been cheerful bards. But like I said, I've never actually met one myself. Okay, then I just turn to the group, and then just everyone be on be on your guard, and then I just I just uh, click the reins, and we move forward. Hey, Marlon. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, can you uh, roll my uh, two two d uh, my your, two d twenties for portent? Okay. Oops. It's a clairvoyant thing. Yeah. Oh, damn, You're throwing those dice hard. Okay, where did I put yours? What did I do? No, Marlon, his shadow died. Let's see. Wait, what are they called? Vistani? Vistani. Yeah, Vistani. Yeah, well, actually, we should be writing this stuff down so we can remember the story. Hold on, where are my notes? Kong's gonna ask something. What race is Vistani? That's a pretty and smart question, Kong. Irina says Vistani are, are humans. They're just a uh, a clan of wandering uh, travelers. I don't think this all right. Puny humans never do anything. If you'd like, I can uh I can keep observing them with the owl. You are observing them, and they look like they're just merrymaking. All right, then like I they switch- don't have a care in the world. Then I switch back to regular vision, and I tell everyone. They seem all right. My okay. owl is going to keep on check, though. All right. So as you guys travel and get closer to the village, they notice you, but they keep playing their songs. Some people are dancing, and one of the Vistani women approach you and say, Welcome, travelers. Where do you hail from? I say greetings. I say hail. Coming from uh, the village east of here, the village of Barovia, we are we are but weary travelers looking for uh, a warm fire to to warm our hearts and 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 ale to keep us keep us from the cold night. And perhaps somewhere. I come to bring the good news of Cheez-Its. He comes to bring the good news of Cheez-Its. All right, let's see. So this is for Kronk. 
Just imagine I burst out from the group doing that. Like I switch back to Owl View. Or switch okay. Back to Owl View. <laughs> All right. They say yes. Come, come. We have ale for you, for travelers. It's always to meet uh, good to meet new friends in these dour lands. Although Barovia, we'd like to talk about that a little bit more. But first, let's get you guys something to eat. And then he looks at uh, she looks at Kronk and says, "And yes, we are interested in trade. Of course, we're traveling traders. Let's see what you have." And then after uh, Taryn bursts out, she says, she looks at your group awkwardly and she says, "Um." Let's leave religion out of uh, out of the camp. The mistress would the not mistress like that. Kronk, Kronk says, Oh, do not worry. He dropped on Hedda's baby many times. I just I, I turn ar- I just turn and like roll up in, the, in a ball and just like draw on the floor. <laughs> like anime style. Alright, alright. <laughs> she, she says, Alright then, well, no matter. Come. We'll get you some food. And so they, they, they bring you guys uh, to the camp. They park your cart. They have your, uh, they have your uh, mules uh, drinking from the river. And then they bring you to the campfire. And they say, Ah, you might want to meet the mistress. But first, eat and be merry. So they sit you guys down on the camp. I'm going to dance with my daughter. All right, so you guys are eating, and you guys are eating well. It's like a, a very meaty stew. Um, I want to ask: Is are the other people eating as well? Wait, wait, before before I eat, I just look around first, and I look around at the forest, and I, I just re- remember from when we were when we first got here, it was we had a hard time finding water and a hard time finding food. So I'm 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 very suspicious with the abundance of food. And I, I kind of just just um, look around and, and see if I can uh, look around the surrounding area. Is is does it make sense for them to have this much food? Hey, can uh, you do an investigation check on the food for me? Well, I'm, I'm trying to do a survival check, not an investigation check. All right, let's see. Well, I just want to make sure my be... food isn't poisoned or drugged or something. I'm just going to be dancing with my daughter. All right, you guys notice the food is actually very natural. It's venison. And it doesn't seem poison at all. Do you ask these questions, Kuya? Yeah, I, I, like, how how did you come across such such uh, such great bounty? Uh, in my short time here in Barovia, uh, I've had difficulties, and I, I'm a proficient hunter myself. He says, ah, that, that itself is a good tale. And uh, I'll let the, the mistress tell you about that. But for now, uh, let us just celebrate. Can I uh, make an inside check? See if he's trying to deceive us? It's a deception check. Or a deception check? Uh, you have no a hint of any kind of deception. Okay. Then, I drink and I eat, and I be merry. Alright. So while you guys are eating, drinking, and be merry, one of the Vistani starts telling a tale. And he says, A mighty wizard came to... And he's not just talking to you guys, he's talking to the camp. So he's just, like, telling a tale to everyone. He says, A mighty wizard came to this land over a year ago. I remember him like it was yesterday. He stood exactly where you're standing. And he points to someone in the crowd. A very charismatic man he was. He thought he could rally the people of Barovia against the devil Strahd. He stirred them with thoughts of revolt and bore them to the castle in mass. When the vampire appeared, the wizard's peasant army fled in terror. A few stood their ground and were never seen again. The wizard and the vampire cast spells at each other. The battle flew from the courtyards of Ravenloft to the precipice overlooking the falls. And he points to the waterfalls behind him. And he points to the top of the waterfalls. And he says, uh, I saw the battle with my own eyes. Thunder sh- shook the mountainside and great rocks tumbled down to the- upon the wizard. Yet by his magic alone he survived. Lightning from the heavens struck the wizard, and again he stood his ground. But when the devil Strahd fell upon him, the wizard's magic couldn't save him. I saw him throw a thousand feet to his death. 
I climbed down the river to search for the wizard's body to see if, you know, he had anything of value. But the river Iblis already speared hit him away. And after he tells this story, everyone kind of claps. They're like, oh, that's a crazy story. Kronk can make thunder, too. <laughs> oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Show us your thunder, great wizard Kronk, he says. Constitution check. Rips a big one. Wait, wait, hey. hey. Can, can I do my Eldritch Blast into the sky? I got an idea. I you got should it. cast Predestination and make him shit himself. Okay, one at a time. <laughs> You fart? Yeah, I'm gonna shake the ground with my fart. Okay, you make like an earth rumbling like brrrr, and it's not, not like a short one, it's like a long one. Like, brrr, and you just fart and it just like your flat and it spreads throughout. Everyone's coughing, they're like, oh my god! But they give a good laugh. <laughs> should and I cast... They, should I cast ba bonfire on the on the fart and create an explosion? <laughs> if you Make want. it smell better. <laughs> you didn't see that Beavis and Butthead movie? You guys are actually casting your spells, just letting you know. Go ahead. You no, I'm not casting. I'm not casting anything. Remember, they're they're very they're very suspicious of uh, these. At least the people in Barovia were very suspicious about magic. And then, so after you rip that one, and they all start laughing, they're like, Get this man some more ale! And a lot of the burlier men in the group grab you and say, Drink! Drink on us! And they challenge and they you to a drinking duel, Kronk. Kronk chugs. Alright, they're, they're dueling right now. Okay, let me just do this. Right. Critical you, guys will find out, you guys will find out the outcome later. Alright, so Kronk's busy right now. He's out, uh, having a drinking... Uh, drinking battle with uh, the men of the camp. It would have been funnier if Gronk took it literally and got on top of somebody and started drinking. Hey Marlon, can I get uh, ales or uh, cups of water? But can I cast prestidigation to make it look like it's ale? And give sure. it to Gronk? Yeah. Gronk's no wussy. But Gronk will know once he's drinking it. Unless he's already plastered it out of his mind. I'm going to wait until like, he's like plastered to give him okay. time. Okay, well, while they're doing that, I, I basically turn to uh, Irina and I said, uh, we, 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 uh, we should probably, uh, Irina, we should probably go see the mistress of this camp and, and be welcome formally. She said, yes, that sounds like a good idea. And then one of the guys next to you says, oh, yeah, Madam Eva. And then she po he points to the biggest tent. She says, he's, she's in there. She'll be glad to have company. All right, so um, is anyone else going with us? I'll go too. Yeah, who's who's mark who's partaking in the merrymaking? Kronk's already locked in. I, Sasha, a, Sasha sounds like she's I'm trying to keep Kronk. Kronk with, yeah. Uh, water slash. All right. Beer. So Sasha, while you're watching over Kronk, the little girl is also playing with the children of the caravan. It looks like she's learning a new game, a card game. So then I guess this is me and Taryn. Yeah. What is Chris doing? Just watching this stuff happen. Are you not gonna go? Wait, go where? To uh, the see the leader of the camp with uh, my brother and uh, Taryn and uh, Roz. Uh, and Irina. Irina, yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll go. All right. So Sasha and Sasha and Kronk are. All right. I right, need the bathroom real quick. So uh, one minute break. I'll be back. This seems too suspicious. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still super. If Kronk gets knocked out on his ass, um, depending on how bad he rolled, um, yeah. If we, if we were, at, if we had to fight, it's gonna, it may be, it may be difficult that we're split up. I honestly think we don't have to fight. Like the yeah, yeah. builds we were in was sketchy as fuck, but this, like travelers, it seems pretty legit. So here's the thing, right? Um, it doesn't it doesn't fit the bill for this kind of a setting. It's supposed to be grim, dark, and these guys are like all happy go lucky. I, I think that there's probably something hidden beneath, or something that they're trying to do. And they're gypsies, right? They're they're kind of like gypsies. I don't I don't know. 
I mean, if you want to follow, believe the stereotypes, but gypsies are always out for themselves. They'll probably rob you blind as you're drunk and, and sleeping. Well, he said they were like gypsies. I mean, how many other words for like gypsy are there? I don't know, because I just Googled it and it said Romani people. Well, did you guys read The Wheel of Time? No. Nope. Yeah. I mean, they could be like the people of the leaf. I guess. I mean, yeah, it is. Hey, he, he does make a point. It is suspicious. I mean, Frost, Frost has every reason to be suspicious. Taryn, on the other hand, just wants to know what, what's, what's up with the leader and why she doesn't like religion. We'll probably find out right when we um, talk to that woman. If she gives us yeah, some sort yeah. of quest, then we're probably good, but if... No, we'll find out. I asked Marwan if uh, I sense any evil. I have a... Uh... I do have a oh anybody if anybody ever wants this I have a spell that lets you cast fire dragon breath as in I give you the power to cast to to spit fire out of your mouth or whatever you want. Where do you do it? Well, screw you then. <laughs> How often can he use that? It's a level two spell, so I could use all the spell slots. He can only use this once a day. Or Sasha can only use those. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, if, if you get outside after the talk and we're not done battling, I'll, if, if I win the battle, give me the spell and then I'll burp the fire up in the air. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fucking awesome? Uh, I couldn't hear any of that. That's not for us. That's it normally. Get an alarm. Maybe he's talking about tomorrow. So who can cast the fire breath? I can't. Actually, it's better to have more speed. So you want to do that for the end of the, um... No, it's just something in case anybody ever needs it. If you want the ability to, to shoot fire out of your mouth for, like, one whole minute. So for, like, no, I think, what? I think that'd be great. Actually, like at the end of the, at the end of the, um, at the end of the, uh... At the end of the chugging contest, I think it should end with a fire show. I can make uh, sparks come out of your mouth. I could pick. I could pick anything. Actually, I could pick acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison. Do fire. Let me do it, cause uh, I could. My, mine doesn't take a spell slot. Right, I'm back. Hey, where do you put uh, the feet? You drag it into your notes. No, not notes. All right, so you guys go to uh... abilities. Okay, thanks. Top of it. Okay, so you guys go to the to the tent, and you see the tent's like uh, it's made of uh, thick, heavy uh, rug-like cloth. And then, so magic flames cast a reddish glow over the interior of this tent revealing a low table covered in black velvet cloth. Glints of light seem to flash from the crystal ball on the table as a hunched figure peers into its depths. As the crone speaks, her voice crackles like dry weeds. At last, you have arrived! Cackling laughter bursts like mad lightning from her weathered lips. You were expecting this? I saw this coming. She says, yes, yes, of course. And it says, I have been waiting for your very peculiar group to arrive. 
It's odd to see an acolyte of Lord Cheez-Its beyond this land. And she looks at Terran. I, I just my put my up. face to my palm. <laughs> face the Lord palm. I, I perk up and, and I say, Yes, it's odd, but I, the Lord Cheez-Its word must be spread through all of the land. She says, indeed, indeed. Although, it is, seems a little odder for a sailor to be so far from the shore. She looks at Frost. <laughs> seaman. A seaman. I say, I, these sea legs need a, need a stretching on land every now and again. He says, indeed. As he pointedly looks uh, at uh, Chris, and she says, this one, this one seems shrouded for some reason. And she's looking at a crystal ball. A charlatan? In the past life, perhaps? And she looks, she looks a little annoyed at the fact that she can't tell you wh what you are. Chris. You mean like my profession? No, as she's gone through each person in the group, you've realized that she's been able to exactly pinpoint everyone's background. But they can't, for some reason, she's having trouble pinpointing yours. Well, I am sort of a infiltrator. What do you want to tell her? Shady past. <sighs> Just come, Just come. She looks at you guys and says, "Come, come, sit, sit." And she points you to the uh, to the chairs around her, t her crystal ball. Oh, is she also part of a school of divination? Yeah, check the crystal ball. Okay, let's see. All right, you're you're looking at her. She she has the tools of a wizard of divination, but she's not a wizard. You you, you see stuff that looks familiar, but you see stuff that's missing. Because usually when they do a divination like this, there would be runes, there would be chants, but she's just literally looking into the future. It looks like, and looking into the past, purely based off nothing. There's no spells, there's no magic. For some reason, she can just see it. Can I help? Is that what you say? Uh, yeah. She says, help, help? With what, good sir? Divination? She says, ah, oh, no, no, no. I don't, I don't, uh, practice magic. I only see what these eyes, and she points to her eyes, and you notice that one of her eyes is looking straight at you, and the other one is just kind of like uh, rolling around in her socket. A lucky eight ball. Exactly. Well, let me let me gaze into the crystal ball as well. Might as well, you know, do some kind of check. Wait, like Professor Moody with the eyeball? Yeah, I don't know who that is. Harry Potter. Oh, oh. Really? I guess. I guess. Maybe. maybe. How? Minus one. Alright, you're trying to look into the crystal ball, but all you see is swirling mist. You can't decipher what's going on. Okay, and so she turns to the rest of you and she says, I've been waiting for you. For all of us? Or, you know. What about the other two? All of you. Even the ones outside. And you see her pull out a deck of tarot cards. Neat. All right. Hey, Marlon. All right. What's up? How long is the uh, chugging contest going to last? You guys are going to be at it for a while. Okay. All right. You see her pulling the cards out. Now... Now, now, I know why you are here. She, st she stops and gr uh, grins at you guys. Hey, Strahd, is it? If Terran casts that clean spell on Yanni, will he be sober? 
I don't have that spell. Oh, well, the, the other guy has it. I don't know who that is. Prestidigitation doesn't work like that. Oh, just wondering. Yeah. She pointedly looks at you, Frost. Strahd? Yes, so uh, I basically... Um, we 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 were we were here to we were, we were we were just merely passing through. We were um, t escorting uh, uh, Mistress Irina to what's the place called again? Okay. Malaki. Malaki. Uh, that that is that is what we're trying to do. She says, "Ah oh, yes, ah oh, yes," and she giggles to herself slightly. He doesn't know yet. And then she smiles. Doesn't know what? She says, ah, oh, wait, wait, pretties. Let me draw your fortune. And she shuffles her deck skillfully. And then she p turns over her first card. She says, ah, yes. She says, ah, yes. The four of glyphs. She shows this card. The shepherd. What does it mean? So, so, uh, so Frost is Frost is uh, is uh, because of his background in exploring um, um, like uh, ancient relics and, and cities that are long gone. He's he's very interested in in this in in tarot readings. Can I tell him what it means? I just rolled an eighteen. Ooh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Before we continue, let's do this. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, there you go. Let me read these out. What did I say it was? Glyphs? Yeah. Uh, they're so disorganized. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So she draws the card. And you immediately recognize it, Chris. And you interrupt her and you say, this card tells of history. Knowledge of the ancient will help you better understand your enemy. That's what you say, Chris. Okie dokie. And she says, Ah, yes! That is correct. And she looks, she gives the group, Find the mother, she who gave birth to evil. And then she flips the next card. We talking wanna... Loth here or something else? What? Are we talking Loth here or something else? That's Loth. Huh. That, what are you talking that's, about? That's just, for just, you to interpret. So I don't continue, please. Here, if you got here, you guys might want to notate this. I'll put this in chat. So that's what Chris says, and this is what she says about it. And then she should. flips. I gotta drag it to my notes. She plays another card. She says, ah, oh, another glyph. The monk. Did I make the roll? You did. So you let say, them know what I know. You say, I know this card. This card tells of a powerful force for good and protection, a holy symbol of great hope. We talk of Jesus? And she says, Yes, the treasure you seek is hidden behind the sun in the house of a saint. On to saint. There you go, shut up. She turns, turns the turns third, the third car. car. She says, three of coins, the traitor. Nineteen. Maybe throw. Damn.
And that's what you say, Chris. You can read it out loud while I look for this. This is a card of power and strength. It tells of a weapon of vengeance, a sword of sunlight. And she says, Look to the wizards of the wines. In wood and sand the treasure hides. When I hear wizards, I perk up and I look at Chris. Eh? Eh? And I, 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 uh, I talk to the, the fortune teller, and I, I look at her kind of confused. I'm like, what enemy are you speaking of that we need to vanquish? As I had said, we're, we are just traveling to take Miss Irina to, to the destination as described. She cackles and says, no, 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 little man. Do not interrupt me. You do not, not, you do not yet see the future, but I have seen what has come to pass. And she flips the next card. The first high card. The Seer. And you recognize this card as well. Uh, this card is of history, knowledge, and the ancient will. No, no that's, that's just that's Gino. Gino took yeah. that. That's what it says. This card sheds light on one who will help you greatly in battle against darkness. Oh, just to let you know, Marlon, uh, it's 10-11. Okay, let's just finish up this part. And then she says, Look for a dusk elf living among the Vistani. He has suffered a great loss and is haunted by dark dreams. Help him and he will help you in the return. So it sounds like four side quests out of character. She's not giving you any context for this, just letting you guys know. She's just literally reading shit from her site. That's fine. So, Frouse being as interested as he is, is he kind of like pulls out his notepad and he starts like writing all this stuff down. For later, because like uh, he's he's uh, he keeps a he keeps a journal of all his travels and and what he's seen and what he does. She turns over the last artifact, uh, last thing, and it's the artifact. Ooh, twenty-four. Taryn's also writing this down in his spell book. Uh, and you recognize, you recognize this. And that's what you say, Chris. Your enemy is a creature of darkness whose powers are beyond mortality. This card will lead you to him. Wait, which card is this one? It's like an artifact card with the skull on it. Is that a phylactery? What number is it? Uh, it looks like a king. Doesn't have a number. I just, says, na I just named it number one through five. It says, he lurks in the darkness where the morning light once shone, a sacred place. It sort of looks like a phylactery. No, those hey. are supposed to hold hearts, though. Is is she rolling cards for the people that are with her right now, or everybody in the group? Everyone in the group. Oh, okay. Oh, so we don't know whose is this. Who's and she there? says... She says, so... So, so shall this future speak. And she grins at you guys. Wait. Oh, sorry. She grins at you guys. And she says, although you do not yet know. And then more to herself, she says, they do not yet know. And she just starts cackling. Okay, so she pulled out five. One for each of us. Hello. Hello. So what about the little girl? And then she reshuffles her deck and says, that. She says, that is all. Of your fortune. Or should I say, and she cackles again, misfortune. So Frost is just nodding and, and trying his best to capture the cards and, and capture um, all the things that he said about each card. And I, I just look to 
I looked at Taryn because I see him doing the same. We kind of compare notes, and I think I think this is probably going to be useful later on down the line. We should we should definitely make sure that we capture this properly. Except I have neater handwriting. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And she says, she says, now go, go. I must rest. And she kind of leans back into her chair and she closes her eyes. Can I have a slime for a familiar? A slime? Yeah. No, you don't, do you have the fine familiar spell? He does. Yeah, I, I read it. The slime isn't one uh, of them. Um... Okay, I'll allow you to have a slime, but it's not going to be an acidic slime. Like, you can't burn through things. That's fine. Can I have it clean my clothes? Sure. <laughs> God. Sweet. No, I can clean your clothes for you. Marlon. Yep. So, the beer chugging contest. Um, uh-huh. Uh -huh. If I win, one of the other guys is going to cast a spell on me. So I can breathe fire, and I'm going to... Wait, 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 cut off. Say it again. Oh, if I win the beer chugging contest, one of the other guys is going to cast a spell on me so I can breathe fire, and I'm going to burp and breathe fire into the air for a full minute. Ross is just going to go to bed. Wait, does he win? That's, that's All right, it. so you guys leave the tent, and you look, and... The first thing you see is you just see Fro uh, you see Kronk breathing fire out of his mouth with the help of Sasha. And he's just going, Psh! and he's just like, ah! Oh! And there's just like fire everywhere. And you're just like, everyone's like cheering. They're like, yeah! And they're all clapping. I and... Think that, I think that deserves a treat. Well, looks like he won. Yeah, so he won. And then, and then the screen turns dark. <laughs> And then, so, the night ends. Alright. So, you wake up in the morning. Everyone wake up in the morning. And you guys start preparing to continue your journey. They give you direction. They say, if you, if you consider, continue towards these falls and go past them, there's actually a ridge that goes up. Although you do have to travel beneath the waterfalls. But do not worry. The water is shallow here. Uh, let's just make sure that we, you know, sell what we want to sell and buy what we want to buy. Can I? Oh, make, yeah. uh, before we uh, go to sleep, can I make another four potions? Okay, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, in the morning, Kronk, you wake up and uh, you're in the bed with two Vistani women. <laughs> and you wake up with them naked next to you. Two Vistani women and one man. <laughs> there you go. Now, what the hell am I doing here? You're two Vistani women and Terran. <laughs> <laughs> what a wild night. And you have like a massive hanger, hangover. <laughs> Alright, so you guys are waking up. Uh, we end the scene with Kronk putting on his pants. And that's what we'll continue next time. Uh, uh, Kronk was only wearing a loincloth. Yeah. Wait, should we do the merchant thing now or next time? We'll do it next time since it's already ten eighteen. and I think Jeff too has work. I'm actually off, but I, I know oh, you guys off? probably want to do a Starfinder though. No, we can keep no, going. No, we should sure continue. We yeah. If we keep going. How long yeah, can you, you want to continue D&D? &D? I'm already yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm down for that. Hey Marlon, I need you to check something out on my character. Okay. What's up? Uh, check my main page. I have, uh, the way I made my character, uh, made my wisdom modifier plus one, but it doesn't show plus one on any of my skills. Wait, hold on. Hey, Jeff, are, are you still good to play D&D, or are you, are you tired? Is that what you're trying to say? I just want to make sure that you still want to keep playing. No, I still want to keep playing. Um, I just don't want to take away from your uh, Starfinder campaign. I'm, no, I'm, like, I'm all. How'd you get like, plus one on this? Like I'm uh, all for a longer campaign, Chris. Um, I think it had to do with while well, making my character, I chose some specializations. That's why my intelligence modifier is so high. It's at plus six. Because right now it says minus one, but this is plus one. Yeah. Oh, I see. And I'm not sure why it's not going over to my wisdom skills. 
Okay. Hey, Chris, just know. Just remind me. I'll do plus two on every single check. All right. Hey, while you guys fix this problem, can we take a five-minute break? Yeah, we can take a five-minute break. Cool. Uh, uh, do you guys want to... So we'll do this until 12? Yes? No? I just wanted to have a timeline. I'm good. I'm good uh, for a while. I guess hey, that's fine. I, that sounds great. If we go past 12, that sounds even better. <laughs> no, it'll be like freaking 4 a.m. for my brother. I'll go until I pass out, pretty much. I, I just had a thing of coffee, so I'm still good. Uh, Alright, so we'll go take a five minute break now, and then uh, we'll come back. Sounds good. <laughs>